Hi everyone, welcome to the taster session for criminal law where we will be covering the law on murder. Before we start talking about murder, we will focus a bit on the two key principles of criminal law, namely the actus reus and the mens rea. Okay, so what do these mean? In order for the prosecution to successfully prove the existence of a crime, they must prove that the defendant had the actus reus and that the defendant also had the mens rea. The actus reus is the defendant's act during a crime and the mens rea is the defendant's guilty mind. So the prosecution has to prove both that the defendant did something and that the defendant was thinking of something at the time he was committing the crime. So let's try and apply those two principles to the law on murder. Before we actually focus on the actus reus and the mens rea for murder, let me just say a few things about murder itself. Murder is the most serious crime in English law. It attracts the mandatory life sentence. That means that if someone is successfully prosecuted and convicted of murder, the judge has no leeway, the judge has no discretion as to what judge, as to what sentence he will give. He will have to give a life sentence. That is different to manslaughter. Manslaughter is also a crime, okay, that relates to taking another's life, but it is a less serious offense. And because it is a less serious offense, the judge can give the defendant the life sentence, but he does not have to give the defendant the life sentence. That is not the case with murder. With murder, the judge doesn't have a say. If he's convicted by the jury of murder, then the judge has to proceed with giving him a life sentence. So having described the consequences of what a guilty finding of murder are, Let's focus on the actus reus of murder and the mens rea of murder. The actus reus of murder is that the defendant has taken the life of another human being. In the majority of cases, this is pretty straightforward. If the victim is dead and is dead as a result of the defendant's actions, for example, the defendant stabbed him or poisoned him or strangled him or any other gruesome way he could think of, to, to end another person's life, then you have murder. You have the actus reus of murder. The only difficulties with the actus reus of murder have to do with the beginning of life cases, so embryos, and the end of life cases. So people who are in, for example, um, permanent deep comas. The law has stated that an embryo is not a human being. So if the defendant kills an embryo, he is committing a crime, but that crime is not murder. At the same time, the law has stated that people who are in permanent and deep comas are human beings. And if a person kills such a comatose patient, then he is committing the, the act of of murder. So that's the act that has to be completed in order for murder to take place. What about the thought, the mens rea of murder? Well, the defendant must intend to take the life of another person or the defendant must intend to cause really serious bodily harm. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that if you have a defendant who wants to kill someone, intends to kill someone, and in fact kills him, then he's a murderer. A classic example of that is a hitman. If a hitman takes money in order to execute another person and he in fact executes him, he is very clearly a murderer. But there is another scenario. The scenario where the defendant kills someone, but he didn't intend to kill him, all he intended was for the victim to get physically hurt. So a, a classic example of that would be a bar fight. There are two men who are fighting in a bar. One lands a punch intending to um, break the cheekbone of the other. The other person 
lands awkwardly down the stairs and he breaks his skull, which results in his death. The defendant did not intend to kill him, but he did intend to cause some serious bodily harm. In the end, the victim died. That combination results in a finding of murder. Okay, so having clarified what we mean by the actus reus and the mens rea of murder, let's look at a few practical examples. So the first one, Andrew fantasizes about killing his ex-girlfriend Barbara but he never goes through with it. Is Andrew a murderer? Well, the mens rea seems to be satisfied. He intends, he would like to kill his ex-girlfriend. The actus reus, however, is not satisfied. She is still very much alive. Because you need both the actus reus and the mens rea in order to have murder, Andrew is not a murderer. Let's go to the second example. Charlie is driving his car and accidentally hits Debbie. He has been going under the speed limit and was following all traffic laws. Is he a murderer? Well, the facts are not very clear as to whether Debbie has been injured or is in fact dead. If Debbie has just been injured, then this is clearly not murder because the actus reus has not been satisfied. She's still alive. But assuming that Debbie is dead, is there murder? It seems that there isn't because Charlie, the defendant, did not have the mens rea at the time. He only accidentally hit Debbie. He was following the speed limit. He was following all traffic laws. He did not intend to harm her. Therefore, no murder in this case either. Let's go to the third example. Eleni, Elaine hated George, but never planned on killing him. One day, she is drinking her tea made up of exotic herbs and George asks to have some. She gives it to him, he drinks some and immediately has an allergic reaction and dies. Is Elaine a murderer? Well, someone is dead, so the actus reus is satisfied, but is there an intention? Well, she hates him, but she never intended on killing him. She never planned on killing him. She never even planned on harming him in this case. All she intended to do here was to give him some tea. The rest was totally outside of her control. Therefore, even though he's dead, it's not clear that he's dead because of her. And it's definitely clear that she did not intend to kill him. So the mens rea is, again, not satisfied. And this defendant is, again, not a murderer. Let's go to the last example. Harry is very upset with his girlfriend Indra because he found out that she was cheating on him. He punches her in the face, intending to hurt but not kill her. She stumbles and falls awkwardly, hitting her head. She dies two days later in hospital. Is Harry a murderer? Well, someone is dead, Indra. Actus Reus is satisfied. Did Harry intend to kill her? Clearly not. He just punched her in the face, intending to hurt, but not kill her. But he did intend to cause serious bodily harm. And that is part of the mens rea of murder. Since he had the mens rea, the intention to cause bodily harm, and the actus reus, the actual killing, then Harry is a murderer. That's it. Thank you very much for paying attention. Goodbye.